lose reception, uh, please let me know. And uh, you can do so through emailing info at bluesunenergetics.net. And we'll do our best to get uh, this recording to you. So tonight's presentation uh, is uh, a basic presentation. And it's actually one that Irina and I have developed to use uh, in our initial public uh, talks about the lights, introducing the lights to new people. And uh, as such, it covers some basics. But we have found that the length of it is just about right uh, for in, in order for most people's attention uh, to be held. And then, of course, creating more time uh, towards the end uh, for the evening for interaction, for people to have experiences, etc., and also to generate uh, new thoughts and ideas. So I'm assuming that most of you on this call are uh, light energy practitioners at some degree or level, and that uh, some of this information may actually not be uh, entirely new for you, or it may be uh, presented in a way that you haven't heard before. Uh, as such, I also um, encourage you, if you want to use this recording for your own uh, meetings and for your own groups and to introduce people uh, to the lights, of course, uh, it's our intention to make this available for that purpose as well. So we're talking about a subject that is very broad, very wide, uh, and as a matter of fact, that's one of the main challenges, I think, in even discussing light, is that it is such a broad and amorphous topic and can be approached from many, many different perspectives. So we're going to do our best to narrow it down to specifics that most people can appreciate and also can understand that light has many benefits and many gifts to offer uh, them to use for their own health and for their own wellness. Uh, by way of a disclaimer, again, nothing on this presentation is in any way uh, intended to diagnose, treat, or prevent any uh, diagnosable illness, whether physical or psychological. And as a matter of fact, I'm not even interested in that paradigm because it has failed miserably. The American Medical Association itself uh, admits 70% of diagnoses are inaccurate. So we as non-medical practitioners, those of us who are not licensed in the medical field, uh, actually have an advantage as we do not uh, necessarily lead our, our clients down that road. So let's look at light now as the basis of all life, at least in this on this planet, uh, in this solar system, perhaps in this universe as we understand it, all life processes are reducible to this common factor of light. As a matter of fact, in the absence of light, there is no life, at least as we know it and as we are accustomed to it. So light has been part of the story here, you might say, the story of life from the very beginning, from the Big Bang. Uh, to the dawning of a new idea, which we also refer to in terms of light. Light is the source of all phenomena in the universe. So if you, like me, are interested in going to the deepest levels of inquiry, as well as the deepest levels of healing, the question arises, would it not behoove us to go to the deepest level of creation and access the energy available for us there? So all life on Earth is dependent on the light of the sun. As a matter of fact, uh, in, in uh, not too long ago in human culture, the sun was even worshipped in recognition of its central role in sustaining life on this planet. And without this light, plants and animals simply die. Now, due to the seasons and the modern artificial lifestyle, we have become in the modern world light deficiency. I should say, in the modern world and in the temperate zones. This light deficiency is largely due uh, to both cultural and climatic conditions. And it's, I find it interesting that seasons are amongst, the change of seasons, that is, are amongst some of the most stressful periods as far as our physical health and well-being goes. Many years ago, I had the privilege of working with a doctor of Chinese medicine, and I asked her one day, just out of the blue, what, when do you suggest to your patients to come in for a regular checkup? When's a good time to come in and see you? And she said, uh, beyond all doubt, at the change of seasons, 
This is when the body seems to go through a major readjustment as the environment also does the same. And of course our bodies are part and parcel. We're not separate from this earth. Uh, all of the, for example, all of the minerals in your body are present uh, in the earth in exactly the same proportion. The percentage of water in your body is the same percentage of water on the surface of this planet. So our bodies are very connected to earth and obviously these cycles uh, as well. And it occurred to me that there was a time when we didn't have this source of seasonal stress. There was a time when the Earth's axis, which currently is tilted to about 23 degrees compared to the axis or the up and down um, polar axis of the Sun, uh, there was a time when the axis of the Earth was actually parallel to that of the Sun. And that change, that would have been a very different uh, climatic experience on this planet. When the uh, because of course it's that 23 degree angle tilt of the Earth's axis that is responsible for the change of seasons as we now experience them. So sometime way back in the deep mists of time, when the before the Earth's axis was probably knocked out of position, uh, we enjoyed what to us would appear to be like a subtropical paradise from one pole to the equator to the other pole, pretty much the same climate. Now I know that might sound boring to you, unless of course you live in California, you're used to it, but uh, what that actually implied was that life on Earth was not so much of a challenge, at least for our physical bodies. We had a year-around supply of fresh and natural fruits and vegetables, there was plenty of wild game all over the planet, and we really uh, actually enjoyed a pretty how could I say, a uh, pretty relaxed uh, environment on this earth before seasons became a factor. And we enjoyed, again, uh, year-round exposure to the life-giving energy of the sun, the light of the sun. How do we know this? Well, our geologists have told us that this is the only explanation for the vast coal fields that lie underground in the temperate zones uh, that are made up of subtropical plants, plants that could only thrive and survive uh, in a subtropical environment. So in other words, we're dealing with an artificial uh, imbalance in our exposure to sunlight. And of course, this is most, um, uh, uh, most experienced in the extreme north and south, where, for example, in the north and south poles, they have a six-month day and a six-month night. Now, Light deficiency, thus, uh, a modern phenomena, uh, has very specific symptoms, and although light deficiency hasn't yet been recognized as an official diagnosis, I think it's something that is fairly easy to recognize when we talk about the symptoms of depression, of weak bones due to vitamin D deficiency. Vitamin D propagation in the body, of course, is naturally dependent on sunlight, and particularly uh, UV sunlight. Poor mental capacity, sleep disturbances, hormonal imbalances, just to name a few of the symptoms that can be associated with light deficiency. And I would dare say that this probably affects a large uh, number of the population. And the further, again, we go away from the, the equator, the more pronounced uh, these effects would be. Now, a lot of our understanding of light as a therapeutic modality uh, it goes back to some of the pioneers in light energy, of which there are many uh, that can be, um, uh, again, accessed these days. One in particular uh, that catches my attention is Dr. John Ott, who back in the 50s and 60s came to the conclusion that we are all light deficient and that this deficiency may be the source of our physical and emotional problems. That's a pretty broad statement. And yet Dr. Ott made the statement based on rigorous experiments that he himself uh, conducted with large groups of people. His main interest was uh, the deficiency of full-spectrum light as, as the sun delivers and the, um, the symptoms and the um, ill effects of working in uh, uh, compromised environments, particularly environments where Partial spectrum lighting was the only source of light, such as in your typical, uh, you know, um, fluorescent bulb uh, office or school situation. These fluorescent bulbs, of course, are not full spectrum, they're partial spectrum, and the body, being uh, attuned to the full spectrum, is going to react 
Uh, it's much like junk food, I guess, of the light spectrum. Anyway, Dr. Ott's experiments uh, included uh, group experiments with students uh, in elementary schools where one classroom was, uh, again, the control, where they uh, were exposed to um, partial spectrum fluorescent lighting for the year. And an adjacent classroom in the same school was fitted with full spectrum light, simulating uh, sunlight throughout the year. At the end of the term, at the end of the study, and again, this has been replicated by others, uh, the results were undeniable that those kids who had the benefit of full spectrum light not only had better grades, they had fewer behavioral issues and even fewer cavities, again, due to the increased vitamin D, which is essential for the metabolism of calcium. So the, the results were undeniable, and the question remains, you know, why isn't that in our budget? Why aren't we doing this, not only in our schools, but in our workplaces, our institutions, our hospitals, etc.? I think we would all uh, deserve the benefit of full-spectrum light. So when we're talking about light deprivation and light as a, as a therapeutic modality, we're really addressing uh, the level of the cells. And uh, this is where the most dramatic uh, uh, benefits as well as deficits are experienced, uh, depending on the quality of light that is available. Now, in our society, we're fairly used to thinking in terms of our bodies, in terms of systems, you know, digestive systems, circulatory, nervous system. And we're also used to thinking of our bodies in terms of organs and their specialized functions. But it's not too often we turn our attention to the cells. And yet the cells in our body are the building blocks for all of these structures. There was a time, again, in the, in the mists of, of history, when single-cell organisms were the only form of life on this planet. And through various um, stages and evolutionary processes, these cells actually came together as a community to ultimately create plants, animals, and, uh, and the human body. Uh, National Geographic recently came out uh, in one of their magazine articles with the statement that only 10% or 1 in 10 of the cells in your body are strictly speaking human. The rest are cells that have adapted from other forms of existence outside the body, bacteria, fungus, virus, etc. So even our 150 trillion odd cells in our body are really volunteers. They are, again, every cell is a microcosm cosm of all of life's processes on a bodily level and are capable of living without the body. Um, this uh, programmed uh, cell death of 120 years for humans was actually determined by a researcher named Hayflick uh, and is referred to as the Hayflick limit on species um, replication, cellular replication replication in species, and it was discovered that human cells, or cells from the human, uh, given an ideal environment, will continue to replicate accurately for 120 years, and it's then there's this programmed cell death, something referred to as apoptosis, that simply tells the cells, that's it, time's up. Now, the question we need to ask is, if that is our allotment, you might say, on a cellular level, to live and thrive for 120 years, why are we doing that? Why are we only living half that uh, on a global level or slightly over that? Of course, things are improving dramatically in many places, but uh, we're very far from that, that um, the goal of living out 120 years of full healthy and vibrant uh, life. There are pockets of uh, populations on the, war on the planet that are still living to 120 years and some beyond, and there's been much research uh, into what it is uh, that these people are doing uh, to, to you know, live out these full lifetimes. One of the things is they're getting uh, fresh and raw uh, nutrients and foods from very rich soils, soils that haven't been decimated by uh, modern agricultural processes. And another factor, interestingly, is that in these long-lived cultures, people enjoy a rich family and community life. Everyone is valued. 
No one is put aside because they're too old or they're retired. Uh, and that age is actually considered uh, an asset, not a deficit. So again, there are cultural factors that go into this survival um, statistic as well. So what happens to our cells? Uh, again, what are, the, what are the challenges and the stressors that are keeping us from this full 120 years of vibrant life? Well, sick cells can be the result of light deficiency, as we've already discussed, toxins, either toxins from the environment or toxins from natural metabolic processes, internal toxins, EMF stress. This is one thing uh, most of our ancestors didn't even have to deal with, electromagnetic field stress, including 60-cycle uh, fields, including microwaves and all the other uh, electronic smog that we live in today. Emotional stress, the connection between emotional stress and physical health has now been fairly established in the study of mind-body medicine. Poor nutrition, dehydration, which again is uh, the older we get, the more uh, devastating are the effects of dehydration. Electron deficiency, this has a lot to do with our disconnection literally from the earth uh, and not being grounded physically and simply the stress of life itself. So what do our cells need in order to thrive, in order to, to, to live long, healthy lives? Well, one thing they need is light in the form of biophotons. Now, biophotons are simply biologically generated and biologically received or available uh, light packets or quanta of light. Dr. Gabriel Cousins, who a few years ago wrote The Rainbow Diet, which was a diet based not on uh, calories or protein to carb ratios. It was a diet based on color. And Dr. Gabriel Cousins recognized that color was an essential but overlooked nutrient uh, in the human diet and the human experience. And his, he was quoted as saying that we are human photocells whose ultimate biological nutrient is light. And, of course, he was talking about humans on a cellular level. So the basic formula to keep in mind here, and it really is quite simple, is that the more light that we can take in, that we can be exposed to and absorb, the more ATP. Now, ATP... Uh, again, is the uh, name for the energy molecule. This is how we measure the amount of available energy in our cells. It's produced by the mitochondria, and in low-light situations, we produce less, and in, with sufficient and adequate light, we produce more. This results in more cellular energy. All of the cellular processes are enhanced with more ATP, and this results in more vitality and optimal wellness for you. So these biophotons, again, um, have been largely, um, how can I say, mysterious or relegated to the realm of metaphysics or spirituality in the past. We now have technologies that enable us to actually uh, capture these emissions. This is an example of a Curlian photograph. Uh, the Fields of Life is an excellent reference written by uh, uh, Harold Saxon Burr back in the 70s where they were making observations of these biophoton emissions in plants and animals, thereby validating the notion that light is a, an essential component of even our physical beings. So, is this the missing supplement? Is this what we're looking for? Is this what our cells are asking for? You know, we're all about vitamin C, and we're all about taking herbs, and we're all about homeopathics, but are we missing something? Is light the missing supplement? There is a way of adding light to the body which stimulates cellular activity. Low-level light tuned to specific frequencies or wavelengths stimulates metabolic processes in the human body at the cellular level. In other words, light can stimulate the body to heal itself. It's now known that there are specific uh, elements within the cell known as chromophores. These are molecules that only respond to specific wavelengths of light. And when they are activated, of course, they contribute to the overall wellness and vitality of the cells. So let's look at some of the different systems in the body that seem to indicate that we are designed, we are created to uh, process light.
And there are three specific systems I want to mention today. Most folks are somewhat familiar with some of these, at least. The acupuncture meridian system is literally a light highway that integrates all organs and systems, kind of like a fiber optic system in the body. And although it's been known of and documented for well over 6,000 years in Chinese culture, for example, it's only been very recently in the West that we have a scientific validation that is satisfying to the Western mind that seems to require material or measurable uh, results. And what these experiments showed was that upon injecting radioactive material into the theoretical point, or the place on the body where the meridian system indicates a, a juncture point, uh, when that point was injected with radioactive material and a certain amount of time went by, um, using specific scanning equipment, the researchers both in Korea and in Southern California more recently were able to observe that this light energy was being transmitted exactly up the pathways predicted by the Chinese uh, meridian system. So, uh, although in the past the meridian uh, system was poo-pooed because we couldn't produce the physical evidence, we do now have the physical evidence that these are pathways of light, not tubes, not physical structures, but literally pathways of light where light energy is distributed from the surface of the body to the various organs and is a self-regulating system as well. It's not a, a static system, but it is a system that uh, is constantly it's trying to achieve balance or homeostasis between um, opposites of energy referred to as yin and yang. And of course there's much documentation and, uh, and knowledge available uh, from the Eastern healing systems about the acupuncture meridian system. More recently, and actually uh, largely to the work of Dr. James Oshman in, in the West here, who wrote Energy Medicine, the Scientific Basis, uh, is this discovery of the extracellular matrix. And unlike the meridian system, which seems to be kind of a macro system, this is a micro system or a bi biological internet made of proteins, collagen and elastin, which form tiny microtubules, uh, which carry ideal cluster water within them as the means of transmission. So it's the water inside these tiny tubes that literally absorbs and emits the biophotons and delivers them throughout the body. This biological internet literally extends to the DNA and connects the DNA of every cell in your body with every other cell. So in other words, there's nothing that goes on anywhere in the body that the entire body is not uh, aware of. These uh, microtubules before the energetic aspects of them were recognized, uh, were recognized as part of the, uh, you know, the, the protein support system, like the scaffolding, the internal scaffolding that holds our systems in place. And of course, collagen is the most um, pro pro uh, prominent uh, by volume protein in the body. But now we understand that it also has not only a physical, but also a, uh, what we would call a multi-dimensional or a light-bearing uh, responsibility. This biological uh, matrix uh, literally connects not only every cell with every other cell, but it also extends uh, out into the environment and absorbs photons and energy and information from your environment, which then informs your DNA as to how to express or adapt to the environment. These are ideas that have recently been shared uh, through uh, uh, Lipton's work, Bruce Lipton's work where he talks about the DNA not as a static blueprint, but as a dynamic a molecule that is constantly interacting with its environment, adjusting and uh, making uh, and adapting to the environmental changes. And it's through this biological internet or the extracellular matrix that this information is, uh, is carried. Another, uh, perhaps a little less concrete, uh, system is the chakra system. Again, long, uh, longly held uh, understanding of the chakra system from the uh, Ayurvedic 
uh, tradition, again, going back over 6,000 years. And the, these uh, chakras, unlike the acupuncture meridian system or the extracellular matrix, are dealing with multidimensional light or higher octaves of light that do not necessarily directly affect the physical body as the other two systems do. However, this, these uh, energy vortexes or multi-dimensional access points, which are centered over the main endocrine gland, are what connect us to multi-dimensional levels or octaves of light. When we talk about light, we often assume we're discussing visible light, the light we can see, but that only actually represents 1% of the entire electromagnetic spectrum. So there's a lot more going on in this universe of light than our eyes and our senses can perceive. However, we do have structures in the body in the form of these chakras that literally tap us into these higher octaves of light and in a similar way help us adjust, adapt, and to utilize that energy and information. And I do find it's interesting that they are centered over the endocrine glands as the endocrine glands, of course, represent our primary regulatory system. So again, the meridians or light highways in the body long uh, understood, well documented. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we know probably more about the meridian systems uh, than we do even about the physical body due to all of the 6,000 years of, uh, of practical experience. The extracellular matrix, again, the biological internet. Notice on the outside of this cell picture here, and by the way, this is a typical cell, but the cell wall membrane has been exaggerated in this picture to show you how the membrane itself is made up of two layers of uh, fat molecules separated by a thin layer of water. And this enables the cell wall membrane to act as a energy storage system, actually absorbing and emitting protons and electrons. And it's the electrical potential in this uh, battery or or microchip, you might say, storage system around each and every cell that is the true intelligence of the cell and the true regulator of all cellular processes, as uh, Bruce Lipton again pointed out in Biology of Belief. But notice that these, uh, these microtubules here on the outside extend across the cell wall membrane and become finer and finer as they go right down into the nuclear matrix and into the DNA itself. So the, just an illustration of how the DNA in every cell in your body is literally wired through this matrix to be fully aware of all life processes going on in the organism. And when you think about it, I mean, all of our technologies are an extension of a human potential. So even our invention of the Internet uh, is an extension of something that is uh, biologically rooted and grounded in our physical bodies. The chakra systems, again, uh, these are the primary chakras, although there are uh, minor chakras and some say as many as thousands of chakras, perhaps a chakra over every cell. But notice that these chakras also are symbolized by specific geometries. And this is an implication of the multidimensional nature of these energy vortexes, uh, uh, geometry being a higher dimensional organizational aspect, part of what we refer to in the 10-dimensional model as the sixth dimension. So getting back again to light as a therapy modality, what are some of the known benefits? And this is a part of this work that actually really pleases uh, us because unlike some of the other modalities that we've worked with in the past that are more theoretical or experimental, there is a many, many decades on pretty well every continent of this planet of light research, research into the benefits and, and practical application of light. Uh, so we have a very strong research base, uh, and of course it's growing uh, day by day as more and more people discover the non-invasiveness of light therapy and the minimal side effects of light therapy. So here are some of the known benefits of light therapy. The increase in cellular AT pre production, which we've already mentioned, resulting in more energy. Reducing the excitability of nerve tissue. And, of course, uh, what this implies is the decrease in pain 
or numbness in the extremities, for example, uh, with diabetic neuropathy. So in other words, direct beneficial effect on the neurons. One of the more recent papers I read actually said that the nerve cells themselves, the neurons, are among the most light sensitive of the cells in our physical body. This reduction in inflammation, as we'll see in a moment here, is uh, a primary benefit when we consider how uh, not only pain and inflammation are always, you know, uh, accompany each other, but that chronic inflammation is also at the root of practically all of our uh, degenerative diseases, uh, which are main killers in the modern world. Light therapy also activates brain and gland pharmacopoeia. This is the synthesis of everything your body needs, all of the compounds, all of the medications, all of the opiates, all of the endorphins that you may need. Uh, your body is capable of synthesizing, and light simply enhances that natural healing uh, capability. Supporting hormone release, which of course leads to greater regulation and uh, less distress around hormonal imbalances, which seem to be also very common in the modern world. Uh, De-stressing the adrenals and the autonomic nervous system, uh, as well as the entire body. Now, this de-stressing component uh, of light energy um, cannot be overemphasized because any true healing that goes on in the body, and all true healing is self-healing, the body is a self-healing organism if we remove the stressors to that process. This uh, resetting of the autonomic nervous system from the stress response or autonom or sympathetic on to the relaxation response or the parasympathetic state is a necessary prerequisite to all self-healing, whether that's in the form of regeneration with a, of, of uh, injured or damaged tissue, whether that's in the form of um, your body's ability to resist infections uh, or to um, reset the immune system from, uh, from a reaction, as in autoimmune issues. All of these self-healing processes are dependent on a state of relaxation. So if that's all we accomplished uh, using light therapy, we would still be uh, well within the game. So uh, just uh, recognizing, of course, that inflammation, this is a... Uh, a cover from time in 2004, inflammation has been recognized, uh, even in mainstream, as a common factor in all degenerative diseases, including, as it mentions here, heart attacks, cancer, Alzheimer's, and on and on. So anything we can do to reduce cellular inflammation is going to, of course, play a role in the prevention of these major killers. Now, we talked about uh, visible light as being only 1% of the electromagnetic spectrum. And yet, even within that 1%, there are amazing uh, healing benefits. If we break the uh, visible spectrum down even further, we come up with specific color bands of frequencies. So all color is is simply a focused frequency uh, within that 1% band of visible light. It turns out that three of the colors uh, in the total spectrum uh, have been studied and validated the most uh, as far as the benefits of light and healing are concerned. And that is red, blue, and infrared. Red, it turns out, stimulates. Stimulates vital energy, increases circulation, energizes the senses, stimulates wound healing, etc. Uh, blue, on the other end of the spectrum, however, relaxes or reduces stress, relaxes the body and the mind, reduces irritation and pain, is an antiseptic as far as skin issues are concerned, reduces high blood pressure, assists with burn, effective against the pathogens associated with acne, MRSA, as well as HIV. So um, I, I find it kind of a paradox because red is at the low end of the visible light spectrum, and yet it is stimulating, whereas blue at the high end, uh, frequency-wise, is relaxing. Infrared, which is a low red uh, in the frequency band, and just below our ability to see, uh, has also been studied for specific healing benefits. And essentially, the infrared uh, operates the same as the red as a stimulator, 
but uh, because of its longer wavelength, it actually penetrates deeper. So we're talking about accessing uh, the benefits uh, or accessing deep levels of tissue, such as muscle, bone, and joint issues uh, with the infrared light. Now, when we're talking about the system, we're talking about uh, the direct application of 500 powerful diodes on the body. And yet research shows that even 120 LED diodes will stimulate a significant rise in circulating natural nitric oxide. Now nitric oxide, I'm sure many of you are familiar with this by now, uh, is a molecule whose discoverers received a Nobel Prize for it in 1988. Uh, it was so significant in the understanding of, uh, of body, how the body functions and also how the body repairs and maintains itself. It turns out that nitric oxide is known as the miracle molecule, and amongst many of its benefits include improved circulation, lowering blood pressure, reducing inflammation, angiogenesis, our new circulatory pathways are stimulated, immunity is boosted amongst some of the benefits. Now, the nitric oxide is actually a gas. It's the gas that bubbles up in people's uh, bloodstream when they come up from uh, diving too deep uh, under the ocean. When they come up too quickly, they get the bends. We're not talking about uh, that volume of nitric oxide. We're talking about nitric oxide gas on a molecular level, which is naturally produced by the epithelial cells or the cells in the interior walls of the arteries. As we age, however, and as our arteries become less elastic and perhaps a little junked up with time, the natural uh, release of nitric oxide uh, seems to uh, uh, diminish. Light therapy does create a momentary burst of nitric oxide. It doesn't last long, but it's enough to remind the body of what it can do naturally. And for me, these uh, are the kinds of benefits that uh, are primarily, how can I say, achieved with the cumulative use of light energy. In other words, light energy can have both acute as well as long-term benefits. And these nitric oxide benefits, I think for me, fall under the long-term benefits. The beauty of, it, of this, though, is that the more we expose the body to this quality and, con and quantity of light, the more this... Um, nitric oxide release is enhanced and accumulates in its benefits. Nitric oxide also helps the immune system, uh, which uses the nitric oxide in fighting viral, bacterial, and parasitic infections, as well as tumors. Nitric oxide can also act as a neurotransmitter and can help with the process of learning, memory, sleep, feeling pain, or any other neurological issues. These are some of the further benefits of nitric oxide. And again, each and every one of these claims has its own research uh, basis. Lowering your risk of heart disease, lowering your blood pressure, giving you more energy, making you feel and look younger, stimulating angiogenesis, as we mentioned, or the formation of new blood vessels and pathways, stimulating the lymph or your body's detoxification system is anti-inflammatory improved RNA DNA synthesis. What this means is that improved cell replication. Okay, remember that 120 year limit. So overall enhancement of the cardiovascular system, improved T cell production. These are the, uh, the specialized white cells in your immune system that are responsible for locating and literally digesting pathogens as well as cancer cells. Enhanced red blood cell production in the bone marrow. And again, this would be a direct benefit associated with the, uh, the infrared uh, end of the spectrum. Enhanced collagen production. Now remember, we mentioned collagen in terms of the extracellular matrix. But as far as an anti-aging benefit goes, again, the collagen is what produces the firmness of tissues uh, and uh, of the protein structures beneath the skin. When the collagen degrades, we then experience what we call aging. So we're talking about the enhancement of this collagen production and therefore anti-aging benefits. Enhanced muscle mass, recovery, and endurance. 
Uh, again, nitric oxide is antipathogenic with specific research supporting it uh, in combating HIV. And in general, in general, it is the anti-aging miracle molecule. Now, so far, what we've been talking about is light itself. But it turns out that light carries information. And information can be piggybacked onto the light, light becoming a very efficient, what we would call a carrier wave. This is perhaps best illustrated when we talk about the study of spectroscopy, which is simply the study of sunlight, or starlight, I should say, from various distant stars. So an astronomer can focus in on a distant star and can record the light of that star and split the light into its various uh, colors or what's called a spectrograph. And so the light of that star, once analyzed uh, through spectroscopy, can tell us exactly what elements are being burned in that star to produce that light, in what proportion, and can also tell us the speed of motion of that star, as well as the direction that it's moving. So that's just some of the information carried in that distant starlight that is available to us. So again, I reiterate, light carries information. The designers of the, uh, of the Elan system, through um, a lot of research and their own understanding and experience, have added specifically beneficial frequencies to the lights, again, which you can access through your choice of programs. These include seven Noget frequencies. These are frequencies discovered by a French physician that were observed to support a broad range of tissues and organs for anti-inflammatory, circulatory, regenerative, and pain relief. So these frequencies are present in the seven manual, what we call the manual channels uh, in the Elan system. There are also included, uh, in some of the program choices, the sacred solfeggio tone frequencies. So these are frequencies that are associated with what have been discovered to be the ancient and original musical tones that were used not only to create music, but were also known and regarded to have specific healing benefits, not only physical, but also metaphysical. These frequencies were actually um, employed in Western music up until sometime in the Middle Ages when the, um, how can I say, the uh, spiritual authorities of, of the time decided to change the frequencies of Western medicine and essentially dumb it down. So uh, it's really cool now these days that many musicians and recording artists have discovered these ancient frequencies and have, are starting to record music uh, in the original musical frequencies. And a lot of this can be accessed online now. Uh, if you want to experience uh, the actual sound of these uh, solfeggio frequencies, you can also go to YouTube and simply type in solfeggio tones. Not only will you get to hear the sounds, but they also come, in most cases, with pretty cool video uh, accompaniment. So uh, another frequency that is um, uh, overlaid on the lights is a Schumann wave frequency. And this is a frequency that helps to ground us and to harmonize our body to the earth and nature, which herself, obvious uh, to most of us who are paying attention, is going through a tremendous transition at this time. So it behooves us to connect more with the earth as she goes through this transition uh, so that we too can go through the transition and come out on the other side healthy and whole. There are also more esoteric, or what we would call quantum frequencies, uh, included with the lights, including a zero-point energy. So by quantum, what I mean is that these are frequencies that allow for the magnification of intention, that allow for, how can I say, the expansion of thought into a manifestation. And again, this is a, a huge topic, probably um, would benefit, would uh, merit a complete class on those functions alone, which I'm happy to do down the road. But suffice to say that there are uh, frequencies uh, within the lights that go beyond merely physical or biochemical benefits. So let's talk a little bit more about quantum communication. Events in the material world, or 3D, the, the world of time, space, and bodies, where most of our attention is focused, 
due to our sensory apparatus, are limited by the speed of light. And as a matter of fact, Einstein said decades ago that nothing could accelerate beyond the speed of light because he couldn't imagine anything existing outside of the material realm. Everything within that speed of light, within that third dimension of physicality, is also subject to very specific laws and rules of nature, including what, it, what is called entropy. And entropy is simply a way of, of stating that things in the material world fall apart, that they don't stay together forever, and that they tend to uh, seek, you might say, the energy of their environment. Uh, and this is unfortunate because what this implies is that our bodies eventually will die and go back to their source. Now, non-material light, however, light that is beyond the visible realm, light that is beyond uh, the physical speed of light, or what we would call hyperdimensional light. And by the way, this is a term that was coined back in the 1890s by uh, William Maxwell, one of the original theorists of electromagnetic energy, actually talked about this hyperdimensional light, or octaves of light that vibrate way beyond uh, the limits of uh, 3D light or physical light. So this non-material light uh, contributes to higher levels of organization and transcends the limits of 3D. And it manifests uh, in the human experience in the form of our light body, or, or aura. So this is a, uh, a structure, an energy structure, that is held uh, or is, accompanies the body, but is not limited to the body. Uh, in esoteric traditions, you might call it the light body. But again, obviously, it's not light within the visible realm, or we'd all be glowing like glowworms, and we'd see it. It is a form of light, however, that can be detected uh, by individuals with highly developed extrasensory perception, as well as uh, equipment such as Curlian photography. So it turns out that your DNA, largely due to the clustered water uh, content uh, uh, of the DNA and also its connections through the extracellular matrix, is now understood as a two-way communication system via light or biophoton emissions. Biophoton, again, meaning physically uh, generated light uh, or physically mediated uh, light emissions. So DNA light emissions literally project, like a movie projector, the physical body according to the higher dimensional blueprints or information coming in from the environment, uh, including the higher dimensional environment. So, you know, when you talk about light workers and light bodies and all this, and that used to be just metaphysical talk. There's now a physics to actually help understand and appreciate what's going on here beyond our senses. So biophotons, these, uh, these light uh, packets that, again, penetrate the body and that the DNA absorbs and emits, uh, are the basis of quantum events, uh, including telepathy, intuition, visualization, manifestation, inspiration, spontaneous healing. These anomalous uh, human potentials can be understood in terms now of biophoton emissions because, again, these biophotons are uh, not limited by the laws of physicality. They are operating in octaves of light and octaves of energy that are not subject to the rules of physicality and thus uh, are freer to operate. This includes the idea of non-locality, by the way, that uh, your thoughts can affect others at a distance. So biophotons, again, may uh, provide a scientific basis and understanding for what we would call intuition or communication uh, or spiritual connection. So who uh, on this planet and in this culture now are looking at light energy and taking light energy seriously. Well, here's a list of some of the institutions, some of the public institutions that are, are pursuing uh, light energy research, and yet it still hasn't yet, as we speak, penetrated uh, into the healthcare system. It turns out that the modern Western healthcare system, largely because of its financial basis, is the most resistant to the application of these advanced science, scientific principles to, uh, to the field of human health. We're enjoying now, uh, again, quantum principles and multidimensionality in many areas of our society uh, in the use of um, 
telecommunications, for example, uh, in the use of uh, space research, uh, many areas that have embraced quantum uh, connectivity and quantum principles, and yet it seems that our healthcare system is mired in the superstition of materialism. Well, the good thing, uh, the, the good news is that the institutions around the healthcare system, such as the ones you see here, are having a serious look at the benefits of light energy. And uh, I think it's simply a matter of the dissolution uh, and the dissolving of the drugs and surgery paradigm that is going to open the doors for a much broader appreciation and understanding of, uh, of the benefits of natural healing, including light therapy. So with the Genesis system, and I love that name Genesis because to me it, it implies a new beginning, that uh, there are three automatic channels to pick from. And again, with a, a modicum of understanding, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to apply light therapy to your life. Uh, with a modicum of understanding, you can understand that your choices are pretty simple. You've got three what we would call automatic channels, that A, B, and C with specific applications. You can see that these uh, combination uh, channels include the quantum frequencies. So for those who are using light therapy for uh, meditation benefits or for spiritual benefits, uh, you can tune into those specific channels. If you're looking for more physical uh, applications and support, again, you have the one through seven um, Noje frequencies, which are all harmonics of the musical key of D, by the way, each with their own specific indications and applications. So here we have, let me make sure I didn't, okay. So the light system that we're discussing, again, can be used for both professional or home use. Uh, again, very easy to operate and use on a regular basis. Uh, the system itself is safe, it is effective, it has been vigorously tested uh, in some of the same testing facilities as NASA uses, as far as I understand, uh, that it is safe for use with children, with pets, for the elderly, and that if used daily, again, what we find is these cumulative benefits that just seem to keep growing the more we use the lights. There's a two-year product guarantee with the device, and again, we, Arena and I, have embraced these lights particularly because we know pretty well all of the people that are involved uh, in the production, in the, uh, in the conceiving of this uh, healing system, and, uh, you know, they have our absolute respect and confidence. Uh, and we know that this company is devoted to your satisfaction as well as to their own longevity. So here we have uh, the currently available systems, including a three-port and a six-port controller. The six-port controller, of course, is expandable uh, and can uh, also accommodate some of the newer um, and uh, and uh, attachments being developed and which will be can always be coming out with something new and exciting. The six port variable, which is the one that uh, that we have, is particularly interesting because it is programmable with your own frequencies up to 9,999 cycles per second or hertz. So if you uh, use frequencies or if you have an interest in frequency medicine and the use of uh, frequencies for healing benefits, here's an, uh, an opportunity for you to experiment uh, with that, a fascinating field. All of these units, by the way, are also USB connected, and so uh, again, uh, future upgrades and firmware um, improvements and, and upgrades are available simply online. So I'm going to in the a few minutes that we have here left, I'm going to invite anybody who would like to ask a question or leave a commentary to simply raise your hand on your panel as a place where you can raise your hand. And I will unmute you at this time if I see a hand raised and invite any discussion or commentary anybody might have. Or if you prefer simply to write something in the question panel below, we can also uh, try to address any questions that may have come up.
Okay, so I'm not seeing any questions. That means either you were thoroughly satisfied with all the information you could possibly absorb, or you fell asleep. I'll go for option A. So I'm going to stop the recording at this time. And again, what I'll do is unmute you all. Oh, I see Marlene has a question. And she's typed it in below. Is there a manual a person can refer in regarding to the Alan system? As far as I know, Marlene, the manual is provided when you get your system. Uh, so uh, I don't know or uh, I, I can't speak to whether that's available for people who are not yet owners. But there is a manual that is, um, that is provided. Thank you for the thank you, Susan. Okay, let's see. Thank you, Debbie, for your kind comments. Something more, uh, Marlene is asking, is there something more comprehensive than the manual? Uh, not to my knowledge, uh, Marlene, although there are many excellent resources on light therapy generally. So, again, um, the Elan uh, newsletter each, uh, I don't know if you get that every Monday, but they include um, suggested readings uh, and books on light therapy. And, uh, of course, you can also go to Amazon or just Google uh, research on light therapy. Uh, there's also, uh, if you've taken uh, any of the courses that were offered in the past, the, the certification course, of course, there is much more information provided in the certification program, which right now is on hold and is being reformulated. Uh, and there was a, a great um, reading list that was also provided there. But, um, again, if you care to email me, I can perhaps make some specific suggestions of books on light therapy uh, and uh, light research that you might um, uh, want to check out. Okay. So, again, have a wonderful evening, folks. Keep shining. And uh, stay tuned uh, to the Elon newsletter. If you're not getting it, I would suggest going to elonenergetics.com and signing up for the newsletter. There they will make announcements of future presentations uh, on light energy uh, from us and others. And, um, again, if you have any questions about this or light in general, please don't hesitate to connect with us info uh, at bluesunenergetics.net, and I also invite you to